Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Xi Tian Wu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and it's a great honor to uh, introduce our paper here about graph out of distribution generalization via causal intervention. Um, we focus some modeling and learning on graph structure data uh, that are ubiquitous in various domains, uh, such as the molecular structures, social networks, knowledge graphs, and also the the, the dependency among the functions in codes. And one important fundamental problem uh, concerning graph structure data is how to uh, obtain the representations of the uh, graph data. Uh, the problem aims to find a functional map that converts nodes in a graph into embeddings in latent space. And um, one typical problem uh, uh, regarding the graph structure data is the distribution shifts between uh, training and the testing data. And there are many common situations that may involve the distribution shifts. Uh, for example, the graph data can come from uh, different domains. And, uh, and the training data and testing data on the graph can uh, uh, distribute on different nodes uh, in the graph that may uh, come from different environments and the distributions. And also the graph structure may evolve with time. And the training data and testing data may, uh, may be collected from the different time window. And that will introduce the distribution shifts across the training and testing. So uh, one important problem that is to be resolved is how to handle the distribution shifts in graph data. And there are many technical challenges uh, regarding this problem. And one challenge is that uh, the testing data from the new environment can be strictly unseen by training. Um, and also the distribution shifts on graph may involve structural information of non-Euclidean space. And so this will make the, the how to handle the distribution shifts on graphs a, a challenging problem. And the methodology of this paper is mainly based on a key observation. Uh, here I would uh, illustrate this illustration through a simple example. So here we consider uh, to predict the user's interest in the social networks. Uh, for example, we need to predict if the user like, likes playing basketball. And then we will have two uh, different uh, node features uh, within the eagle graph. Uh, the first feature is the uh, user's friends are young. And the second feature is the user's friends like sports. So in this example, if the social networks is collected uh, from a university, then these two features would both have the uh, positive correlations with the user's label. But if the social network transfer from a university to a link LinkedIn, uh, which means that the, the, the social network is formed from the users on, on a LinkedIn, then the first feature would have no correlation with the node label because the so for the social networks on the LinkedIn, the user's age and also the user's interest would have a uniform uh, distribution. But the second feature would also uh, have a, a positive correlation with the user's label. So in this uh, example, we can see that the first uh, the, the the correlation from the first feature to the node label is uh, a spurious correlation that only holds in the university social network, but not hold for the LinkedIn social network. But the second uh, the, the feature would have a stable uh, correlation with the node label, uh, which is a causal relation that uh, universally hold in different environments. So we can see that we can use the the second feature uh, for the model prediction, and that can uh, guarantee a, a, a desirable a generalization across different environments. But in contrast, if the model captures the first uh, features for prediction, then the model uh, would in, prim uh, in principle fail for generalization from, uh, uh, from an old environment to a new environment. And then I will talk about the problem formulation of out of distribution generalization on graph. We assume the graph uh, is denoted by a G and the adjacency matrix A and node features X and node labels Y. And we can write down the, uh, the, the distribution of data generation and through a joint distribution. And here E is, um, uh, it, it, it is a common uh, factor that causes the, the, the different uh, data distributions in different uh, environments. So here, by definition, we can see the uh, environment here is a latent confounder for the uh, for the input graph G and also the node label Y here. So it will uh, commonly cause the, the both of the, the, the input graphs and the node features. 
and there are many um, different uh, definitions of the, the, the environments in different contexts. For example, if uh, for the social networks and uh, the graph data may uh, be collected from different regions, and then a particular uh, region can be a, a, a specific environment. Also for the citation networks, uh, the, 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 the published papers may uh, come from a different uh, pub, uh, public publication years. So we can uh, treat the publication time as the environment. Also for the protein interaction networks, uh, the, the, the different species uh, means the uh, different environments. So the definitions of the environments can vary um, depending on the specific context. Um, then we can uh, we can see uh, how the graph neural networks learn uh, in uh, these problem uh, scenarios. We consider uh, the general formulation of graph neural networks and consider the feature propagation uh, to obtain the node level representation and also the prediction. And then we will uh, use the maximum likelihood estimation for model training, uh, which will uh, lead to the commonly used to supervise the learning loss. Um, and then in this, uh, in this process, we can uh, write down a causal graph uh, that denote the causal dependency among different uh, variables in, in this learning process. So in the, uh, in the simple uh, causal graph, there are three uh, dependency paths in the graph. The first path is from uh, the variable g to the uh, y hat. And this uh, dependency is uh, induced by the predictive distribution of the graph neural networks, uh, which is denoted by the p theta. And the second dependence path from e to g uh, is uh, given by the definition of our data generation because the environment would impact the data distribution of uh, input graphs in different environments. And the third dependence dependence path is implicit uh, reflected by the training process because the model training would uh, impact the model parameters and the model's prediction would depend on the, uh, the, the trained model parameters. So uh, there would be a, a dependence from the environment to the predicted uh, labels. So according to this causal graph, we can see the, the environment E here established uh, uh, it is a confounder in the causal graph. It's a common cause for the uh, variable g and y hat. So the environment would establish a shortcut, a spurious correlation between the, the variable g and y, and the model would, uh, would tend to exploit the spurious correlations led by the latent confounder E. So to resolve this issue, our uh, solution is to cutting off the dependence between E and g by a causal intervention. Uh, specifically, the way uh, uh, the main idea is to replace the traditional maximum likelihood estimation, the learning objective, uh, by a new learning objective of causal intervention uh, that uh, cut cut off the dependence path between the, from from E to G. And uh, next, we need to derive a tractable learning uh, objective from the causal intervention objective. And the first step we use here is uh, to uh, utilize the existing technique from the backdoor adjustment in causal uh, inference. And we can uh, obtain uh, estimates of the, the causal intervention objective. And here the P0 is a model-free prior for the environment. Um, but still for this uh, learning objective, we, we would need to require the observed environments in data. But in practice, for many uh, situ uh, practical situations, we uh, and, and such, that such kind of information like the observed environments uh, are unavailable in, in the training data set. So next, uh, we need to derive a tractable learning objective that can estimate the, the latent environment information in data. And here we introduce a new uh, distribution uh, denoted by Q5 here, which is the variational uh, distribution. And then we can use the JSON inequality to obtain a variational lower bound of the original learning objective. And so the, 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 the learning objective well, within the purple circle is our actually used uh, the learning objective. And uh, this objective contains three different terms. So for the model, and then for the model instantiation, uh, we instantiate the Q5 here as a pseudo environment estimator, which will uh, use the input graph as an input and then uh, estimate the uh, pseudo environments for each node in the graph. And the P theta here, uh, we instantiate it, it as a mixture of expert uh, graph neural networks predictor. 
and the model prediction condition on the on the estimated environment. And the p zero here is a, a, a trivial prior distribution for environment. And then uh, for the detailed model architecture design, firstly for the pseudo environment estimator, we uh, assume uh, it as uh, softmax neural networks, and we we would use the output of the softmax function as the estimate for the uh, probabilities of uh, different environments uh, for uh, different nodes. And then, uh, we, we, since we, we, we would like to estimate uh, uh, each, each node, uh, how each node belongs to different environments, so we need to sample from this distribution. But because the sampling process would introduce the, the non-differentiality, so uh, we, here we use the Gumball Softmax to make the sampling process uh, differentiable for uh, backpropagation. And besides, for the uh, GNN predictor, we, we, we instantiate it, it as a mixture of expert architecture. And spe specifically, we introduced two different model uh, implementations. The first uh, implementation, we extend the GCN architecture and make it to a mixture of expert uh, architecture. And the second, for the second implementation, we consider the, the, the GAT model and we generalize the GAT uh, implementation to a mixture of expert architecture. So the, 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 the figure on the left, uh, on, the, on the right side, uh, illustrate the, the feed forward process of our model. And to verify our model, we need to uh, consider the experiments to uh, validate how the model can uh, handle the distribution shifts in data. Um, so here we mainly fo follow the previous works for the experiment designs. Uh, specific, uh, specifically, we need to uh, first split the uh, the data into in distribution and out of distribution portions, and to verify the model. And uh, in particular, we uh, for the in distribution data we. Uh, randomly split the data into the training validation and testing set. And we train the model on the training data of in-distribution portion. And uh, the, the model uh, testing would be uh, conducted on both the testing data of the in-distribution portion and also the out-of-distribution data that comes from a different environments than the in-distribution data. And for different graph data, we consider uh, different ways to split the data uh, into uh, into the in distribution and out of distribution one. Uh, for example, for the temporal graph data, uh, we can use the time information for data split, and and for some data sets that, that may contain uh, multiple subgraphs that are uh, disconnected, and we can use the different subgraphs for training and testing. And here are some of the experiments results. And the archive data set is a temporal graph that contains the uh, publication time of the papers. And the Twitch data set is a social network that contains multiple disconnected subgraphs. And here we also compare with some uh, strong baselines for the out of distribution generalization task for general machine learning and also the uh, graph structure data. And our model, uh, and shown in the last line, and achieved uh, some improvements over the state of the arts. Uh, also, the, the figures show the model performance using the GCN and GAT uh, backbones on the elliptic data set, which is the financial data set uh, that are split according to the uh, different uh, graph snapshots in different time windows. And that will naturally introduce the uh, distribution shifts from training to testing. And we also uh, we also consider some ablation studies and hyperparameters analysis to verify the model. Firstly, we uh, consider the regularization. Uh, we, we, we do the ablation studies on the regularization loss, and we compare the, the original model with the ones removing the regularization term in our new learning objective. And we observe that the, the, the model's performance on the out-of-distribution testing set would exhibit a clear a degradation which can verify the effectiveness of our uh, regularization term for the for improving the generalization. And we also uh, uh, report the model performance uh, when using different parameter, hyperparameters, including the numbers of the pseudo environments k and the temperature coefficient in the Gumball softmax. <clears throat> and we can observe that the model performance uh, is 
generally stable for uh, for, for, for different settings of the K in a proper regions. But for the temperature coefficient, we need to uh, use a small temperature width, and that can um, produce a satisfactory performance. And finally, I will uh, give a brief conclusion of our work. So in this work, uh, we mainly focus on the out-of-distribution generalization problem. And we identify that the confounding bias of latent environments in graph data uh, is a key factor that leads to the poor generalization on graph data. And to resolve this issue, we propose a new uh, learning approach uh, resorting to the causal intervention and variational inference uh, that lead to a new learning objective and also the, the, the modified model architectures for uh, improving out-of-distribution generalization. And to verify the model, we demonstrate its uh, superiority of the, uh, the of the model on diverse real world data sets and achieve the improvements over uh, state of the arts. And here is the links uh, to our papers and codes. And yeah, that's all for my introduction. Thank you. Sure.